Our last rock group this week are our metamorphic rocks. So the word metamorphic comes from meta, meaning to change, and morph, meaning the form or the shape. So when something is metamorphosed, it's just changing the shape or form of an existing rock. So when you're thinking of how a sedimentary rock forms or an igneous rock forms, sedimentary is a little bit of a diffuse definition. Igneous is really, really simple. Metamorphic, we're going back to simple. So for a metamorphic rock, in order for it to change its form or change its shape, all it has to do is to go under some sort of heat or pressure. You can't do pressure only. We'll get to that in a second. So you can have heat only metamorphosing a specimen, or you can have a combination of heat and pressure metamorphosing a specimen. So the more and more heat and pressure that a rock is put under, the more metamorphosed it would be or the more um, altered or more changed it would be. So that means you can have the same specimen go through different stages or phases of metamorphosis. So what happens during metamorphosis is you can have new crystal growth, so you can have brand new minerals showing up that weren't in the original specimen. So with a mineral, you have that huge mineral group of the silicates, so they're all made out of silica, but they're in different structures and different forms. So you can have a silicate bearing specimen that forms all different mineral of the, of the silicates group throughout its metamorphosis. So you can have a mineral group that wasn't present in the first version of the rock or what's called the protolith or parent rock. That's what the original rock is before it metamorphoses. So you can have a specimen that's just a bunch of silica that doesn't have any muscovite in it or anything, it's just a bunch of quartz. And then through metamorphosis, it starts to form the quartz. I mean, it starts to form your muscovite, it forms biotite, or it forms garnets, or it can go all the way to forming olivines. So if you have those raw ingredients there, through the heat and pressure of metamorphosis, you can get those new minerals forming. Or you can have recrystallization. You can have minerals that are already present, and the crystals just grow larger and more visible through the metamorphosis process. You can also just get a change in texture, perhaps something when the crystals become larger, it becomes more shiny, becomes more lustrous due to the metamorphosis. So you can take something that is dull and not really polishable, like our coquina limestone, and then once it metamorphoses into marble, it becomes um, larger grain crystals of those calcite crystals, and it becomes something that is a bit more lustrous because those crystals are so large. So you get a change in the texture and appearance of a rock due to metamorphosis. So any rock can be metamorphosed. There are some that have specific words, you know, such as limestone can turn into marble, but other terms, when there's no pre-existing metamorphic rock title, you just add the prefix meta to it, and then you get the metamorphosed version. For example, we have our conglomerate. This one was the siliclastic sedimentary rock. But if I were to put this under extraordinary pressure, such that all of these rocks were squished in the same direction, you would get a metaconglomerate. So looking from the side, there are these big pebbles in it, but they're all smashed in the same direction. This brings us to the term foliation, like foliage or leaves. It kind of came up when we were talking about muscovite, that phyllosilicates has to do with sheets or layering. When a metamorphic rock is termed foliated, that means you can see the stripes or lines within it. This one here is called nice, and this one is super recognizable. Nice with a G, it's weird nice, you'll see it in the activity. Um, but this one is called nice, and this one is a foliated metamorphic rock. Another example of a foliated metamorphic rock we have here. I'm not going to give you the name of this one because this is one that you'll be identifying in your activity based off of the description. But this one, you can see the little layers or foliations of it. You can also see the mineral grains kind of all in the same orientation, giving it that foliation or giving it that, that um, platy or flat cleavage. So another example of a foliated rock, just like with our siliclastic, but sometimes really, really hard to see the individual grains. Sometimes with a foliated rock, it's a little bit hard to see the layerings. This one here is slate. Slate is the metamorphosed version of shale. This one is our shale. This one is our slate. That makes shale the protolith or parent rock. 
proto, like prototype, is the early version of something, and lith just means rock. So when you see the word protolith, it's just whatever rock you would call it before it turns into something else. So with our slate here, all of the grains are packed more tightly together because of that pressure than they are in the shale. So you might not be able to hear this quite as well, but I'm going to try it anyway. So here we have all the molecules that are within it are a bit more diffuse, whilst they're far more dense here, creating a bit of a better resonance. So when I tap this against the table, this one here against the table, all the molecules are going to bump right into each other really quickly and create this resonance that's not as good as a bell or a piece of metal, but it has a bit of a better resonance than something that isn't compressed or isn't metamorphosed like shale. So I'm going to tap the shale first. Doll thud, and hopefully this one comes out as a better ring. This is going to be the slate. Put this on my lap. Well, it didn't sound great. There you go. Oh, it didn't really come out, but maybe in person, if you were to able to come by when it's safe to come by the lab and check these two out in person, that's one of the ways you can tell the difference between slate and shale when you have the hand specimens. There's even this phrase of slate sounds great, where it can help you to tell the difference when it has a bit of a better resonance. Apparently it's not going to come up on the video, but there we go. So shale is the protolith of slate. I mentioned already that limestone is the protolith of marble. And then we also have these two specimens that I mentioned before um, in an earlier sedimentary rocks video. We have our sandstone. This is a siliclastic uh, sedimentary rock, while this one here is our metamorphic rock. So this one is the quartzite that is made up from the metamorphosed sandstone. So if you look at the quartzite, you remember quartz can come in all kinds of colors, so too can calcite. It just needs a little bit of a, a mineral impurity to make it look a different color. So if you look at something like marble, the metamorphosed limestone, it looks really, really similar in terms of their, uh, their grains, their appearance, their texture feels really similar, but the great thing is that a metamorphosed rock has all the same minerals as the original rock. It's, it could have brand new minerals too, but if you had calcite in the protolith, you're going to have calcite in the metamorphosed rock. So if you're not sure, is that quartz or is it marble or quartzite or marble, you can do that acid drop test like I did in our calcite video where I put the HCl right on the calcite and it fizzed that's one of the ways you can tell marble and quartzite apart. That's going to show up on the, uh, the assignment, by the way, so diagnostic between um, quartzite and marble. So speaking of quartzite and marble, these ones are the most common types of metamorphic rocks in the non-foliated group. So the foliated are the ones that have lines or stripes or flakes, and then non-foliated are the ones where you don't see any differences um, of layering or texture that would cause that, that stripiness or that um, leaf or sheet-like appearance. Here we have another foliated. So with non-foliated, the way these ones form, non-foliated rocks form from heat only. So I mentioned that metamorphic rocks can be heat and pressure or just heat. You can't get pressure only. The reason you can't get pressure only is because when you go deeper and deeper in the earth and you're getting more and more pressure, you're also getting a higher temperature. And at some point, that high temperature is going to melt the rock. So earth isn't big enough to have pressure only, and the inside is too hot from the radioactive decay in the earth's core. The inside is too hot to get super duper deep without melting. What happens when it melts? It becomes an igneous rock. We've got our lava lamp still there to remind us that the melted lava stuff becomes an igneous rock. If it gets too hot and melts, it's not metamorphic. So metamorphic rocks stay solid and they form from a protolith being exposed to heat and pressure or just heat. Heat and pressure, you can get a foliated rock. Just heat, you'll get a non-foliated rock. 